we're going to define something right now that we've actually been talking about for the last few lessons, and that's called a rigid motion. A rigid motion is a transformation that preserves length and angle measure. So, surprise, translations, reflections, and rotations are all rigid motions. Because when we did our transformation, they had the same length, they had the same angle measurements, and they looked exactly the same. Two figures are what we call congruent. When one can be obtained from another by a sequence of rigid motions. So any combination of translations, reflections, and rotations all creates these things called congruent figures. Some people say congruent because they just emphasize a different syllable. Angles with the same measure are called congruent angles, and sides with the same measure are called congruent sides. What we can do is if you look up in the picture, we can also say which sides are matching. So there's another vocabulary word, corresponding angles are in the same position, and corresponding sides are the sides that would be the ones that match up. So what we have to do down in example one is just name the corresponding parts. So which sides are the ones that match up, and which angles are the ones that match up. So let's talk about notation. For notation-wise with sides, you put a little segment line on the top. And you might already know this from back when you did it in elementary school. I'm not sure when they teach it to you. But the way that we do it is you write, we would write side AD or segment AD is congruent to side WZ. So I've got this little segment line on top of it to represent that it's representing a side and this is the symbol for congruent if you didn't know it's an equal sign with a little squiggly on the top so now let's match up all of our other sides so we've got a b is congruent to w x um, we have b c is congruent to XY and CD is congruent to YZ. Now let's go to angles. So for angles, we've got angle A, it's like a less than sign for the word instead of saying the word angle, is congruent to angle W. Then we have angle B is congruent to angle X. Angle C is congruent to angle Y. And angle D is congruent to angle Z. Oh, I just realized over on top of CD over here, I forgot my little uh, side segment line. There we go. Don't forget that. Now, if you figure out that two shapes have co uh, congruent sides and congruent angles, then you can say that the shapes are congruent figures. So now what we're going to do is look at this picture, and we're going to decide which shapes are congruent. So which shapes have the same side lengths, which, si which shapes have the same angle measurements. So if you look at these two small triangles, FDE and PMN, those are congruent because they both have 2, 2, right? This is 2, 2, and then they have that slant, which is the same length for both of them. So here's another notation. Instead of writing the word triangle, FDE, we put a little symbol of a triangle, and that represents the triangle, FDE. So triangle FDE is congruent to triangle PMN. And what you want to do is you want to match up the, the parts in the same order. So if I do FDE, F matches P, so I'm going to put that first in the order. Um, let's see. Then we also have um, triangle JKL. 
and A, B, C. Those are both a 2 and a 3. That's a 2 and a 3. So we have triangle J, K, L is congruent to triangle A, B, C. I want to match up the letters in the same order. So J matches A, K matches B, and L matches C. And then it doesn't look like PQR is congruent to anything because that has a side length of 4 and nobody has a side length of 4. Moving down, let's look at a sequence of these rigid motions. So the red figure is, a con is congruent to the blue figure. Describe a sequence of rigid motions between the figures. Now I want you to understand that there are m usually m uh, multiple ways to create um, a sequence. So your sequence that you're imagining right now, if you have one, might be different than mine. I'm just going to give you one. And if you have another one and you want to check with me in class, you can certainly do that. I'm going to zap another copy of this grid on the screen so I can turn it around because it looks like the figure got rotated to some degree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my picture because to make the red figure turn into the blue figure. So I, I'm going to turn it, and it kind of looks a little bit like, like it's pointing the same direction as the blue figure right now, but it's not in the same spot. So what I would need to do, I would need to take this red figure, and I would have to move it up four units, because I want to take this bottom corner, and I want to put it at zero two. So in order to take this and end up over here at 0, 2, it, it would have to go up 4 units. So now let me figure out what that would be. So I bring it back, and then I rotated it one turn, which was 90 degrees, and I rotated it counterclockwise. So I just did my short abbreviation that we talked about back in rotations, 90 degrees counterclockwise, and then what I would need to do would be to take this new figure and um, move it four units up. All right, let's check out our last example, example four. You can use the buttons shown at the left to transform objects in a computer program. You can rotate objects 90 in either direction and reflect objects in a horizontal or vertical line. How can you transform the emoji as shown below? So I'm going to create another emoji that I can turn around. All right, here we go. It definitely looks turned 90 degrees counterclockwise. But then what happens, you see the tongue is in the wrong spot. So I, I can't do this. But what you would have to do would be to flip it. Um, so we would reflect it, and we would reflect it. Um, it looks like over a vertical line. I'm sorry, horizontal line. Because then the tongue would go from here. It would be down at the bottom. So here's what we got. We have a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation then reflect over a horizontal line. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.